Is there any way this man is the father of these twins? Everyone, this is Amanda. Welcome, Amanda, to the show. Backstage is Amanda's fiance, James. Now, I want you to take a look at the screen. This is a photo of Amanda. This is a photo of James. And these are their four-year-old twins, Stormy and Jameson. Pause. Okay. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this reaction. I'm pretty sure we're all thinking the same thing. How on earth can this guy be the father of these kids? I mean, what the hell is this woman thinking? I mean, come on. But let's not be like this guy and point any fingers just yet. Let's listen in on this woman's story. Amanda claims she's never cheated. James suspects Amanda's been unfaithful with a man of another race. This is her story. I am pissed off because my fiance James made me travel 800 miles just to get a DNA test. All he does is question our twins and I'm positive he's the father. I have never cheated on James. Yes, the twins have a dark complexion, but it runs in my family. They also have curly, kinky hair, but I have no control over how my kids come out. I used to work in a prison, and James thinks that I had sex with one of the inmates. He found some letters, but we were only friends. James worked all the time. He was never affectionate, and I just felt neglected. <sighs> Face palm. I really hope for your sake you know that this guy is indeed not the father. If you did think so, then you're probably in the wrong era. What I mean by that is that long ago, people actually believed that birth may be influenced by outside or past factors. For example, the Cabinet of Medical Curiosities focuses on maternal impressions, which was the idea or scientific belief at the time that a pregnant woman held the ability of thought and imagination to influence the fetus growing inside of her. The book presents various cases for such phenomena. For example, a lady who stared at cats for too long that her child came out with the cat head. Or other cases in which a mother would have fish on her mind for too long that her child actually came out with scales. There are various other cases, uh, such as presented below, the frog boy, bear boy, and duck boy. Pretty disgusting. However, in this case we focus more on another form of maternal impression called telegony. Now, telegony was the idea that if a woman who was previously engaged remarries another man and becomes pregnant with her new partner's child, that very child may still obtain traits from her mother's first mate. So this means that perhaps Amanda did not cheat on James after all, and James is in fact the biological father. It just so happens that his donor sperm picked up traits from another guy. So I guess you can say that women in the past were lucky enough to get away with adultery. Who knows? Telegony actually dates back to 300 BCE as it was Aristotle who introduced the idea in fact, there is a popular text titled Aristotle's Masterpiece, first published in 1684, that contained a variety of information about pregnancy. The theory of telegony was not necessarily argued against, as genetics was not well introduced until Mendel's 1865 hybrid experiment gave a better understanding of heredity. Hence, telegony was widely accepted as a fact from the time of Aristotle and all throughout antiquity, specifically the Middle Ages. Despite how long ago this theory of pregnancy and childbirth came to be, it carried out pretty well throughout the ages as both German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer of the 18th and 19th century and English philosopher Herbert Spencer of the 19th and 20th century were firm believers of telegony. They believed that the theory of telegony functioned well under the laws of genetics for both humans and animals. As mentioned, the idea of telegony was first proposed by Greek philosopher Aristotle. This theory came to fruit with the idea of Theseus from Greek mythology. Before science, art, literature, or written language, there were myths. The myth of Theseus was known as the hero who saved Athens by navigating the labyrinth and slaying the Minotaur. The interesting thing about Greek mythology is that all myths are tied together and tell a huge narrative. The story of Theseus starts in Athens. The king of Athens, Aegis, 
had no children, and he went to the oracle of Adelphi for a message. The oracle told Agus to not loosen the bulging mouth of the wineskin until you have reached the height of Athens, lest you die of grief. He then stopped in Troizen and told the king of the oracle's message. And the king of Troizen wanted the next king of Athens to be his own grandson. The king of Troizen then proceeds to get Agus drunk and tricks him into sleeping with his own daughter, Ethra. Knowing what had happened, Agus hides his sword and sandals underneath a boulder and asks Aethra to not reveal to his son the paternity of the boy until he could remove the boulder on his own. Another story tells that Aethra also slept with Poseidon, the god of the ocean that night, and a mixing of seamen gave Theseus immortal and mortal-like characteristics. The theory of telegony was rediscovered as Aristotle was rediscovered in the Middle Ages. During the marriage of Edward the Black Prince, who was heir to the throne of England, some were very concerned that his wife, Joan Fair Maid of Kent, would not produce a pure offspring due to her previous marriage. It was thought that their children would not be completely of protagonist blood. Inside the science arena, telegony was used for breeding livestock and to explain deformities in offsprings. In ideas outside of science, Trish has used the theory of telegony to promote the Ten Commandments and reduce adultery. Next is the influence telegony had on researchers at the time. The most famous example of telegony comes from Lord Morton's Mare in 1820. It's about the Earl of Morton who bred a quagga, as seen in this picture. It's a subspecies of plain zebra that's now extinct. He bred it with an Arabian chestnut mare. To make things clear, I drew out the quagga and the mare. So these two were mated and ended up having a hybrid child. This mare was later given away to be bred with an Arabian stallion. Though their offspring looked similar to both of them, as seen here. It still had traits of the quagga, such as the stiffer hair instead of the droopier hair of the stallion. The offspring also had dark lines across its forehead, the front legs, and the back of its hind legs. These additional traits that seem to have come from the quagga made telegony seem real. They didn't have any other explanation on why the offspring had these extra lines or traits of the quagga that weren't seen in the stallion, its true father. Due to this, many people believe telegony had some credibility. Professor Austin Flint of Cornell University Medical College was one such person. A passage in a book he wrote in 1888 titled Textbook of Human Physiology talked about telegony. It gave a thought example of a woman who had previous relations with an African male before later having children with a white male. Flint stated that the children would have some characteristics of the African race despite the white male being the father. Several scientists who disagreed with the theory had it become less favorable in the 1890s. The results people thought they could see couldn't be replicated, and logic suggested further children would resemble the father more, which isn't always true, bringing us to telegony now. Telegony was eventually proven false with the onset of the theory of heredity. Morton's mare is now explained as the stallion and mare giving their recessive alleles to their children, giving them traits not seen in either. A recent exception discovered is in a species of fly. A female fly would be mated with a smaller male fly, then later with a larger male fly. Its child would be smaller like the first fly. This is explained as sperm from the first fly coming into contact with an egg and influencing future offspring. As of now, it's uncertain if this exists with other species, but it has been found that fetal DNA can cross into a mother's brain since the baby is attached to her bloodstream through her umbilical cord, which can affect future pregnancies. 
as all of her future children will also be connected to that bloodstream. So, looking back at the Mori case from earlier, even though we just said that the theory was proven false, is it possible that this specific case may change the history? Probably not. But hey, let's have a little fun and take a look. When it comes to four-year-old Stormy James, you are not the father. Well, what do you know? Big surprise. When it comes to four-year-old Jameson, James, you are not the father. Oh look, another surprise. Okay, I think we're done here. <laughs>